It is the unconscionable crime. I mean, I know that you're sitting at home and you probably can't even really think about this, or maybe you can um, in a small sense, because we've heard about it so much. Filicide, a parent killing their own child. It happens so much more often than we think. According to a recent Brown University study, this occurs about 3,000 times a year. And you know what? Just last night, it happened again, allegedly, in Torrance, California. The victims of this horrifying crime were three little girls, a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and a little girl who was just two months old. My heart was just like, oh my God. Neighbors reacted to the horrifying crime that investigators say took place inside this small home. A mother had uh, killed their daughter, their, their children inside the residence. Deputies made entry into the uh, residence and found uh, three young children dead inside. She was taken into custody and transported to a local hospital for evaluation. Okay, so right now, um, you know, the details are a little sketchy. We don't know everything, but we know that police say they found the children. And I'm sorry, this is hard to hear, but they were lying in a pool of blood in bed with their mother. She was naked and holding a knife. So here we are again, you know, covering another incident of filicide. Let's talk to Robbie Ludwig about this. She's a psychotherapist and HLN contributor, and also author of um, Death Do Us, Till Death Do Us Part. Uh, Robbie, thank you so much for being with us. When we hear a bit about this case, what would, I mean, you have to think that it is a true mental illness, but that's not always true for some of these parents who kill. Right. I mean, the first thing I thought of is, look how close these kids were born together. Mm -hmm. Were they all planned? Did this woman have a history of depression before she became pregnant? We need to look at the risk for women who are having kids and if they are at risk for postpartum depression, postpartum psychosis. There are lots of different reasons why mothers kill their kids, but in this case, because the kids were so young, so close together, it makes you wonder, was there something that wasn't treated or something that wasn't recognized? Because this woman sounds like she was suffering from postpartum depression or psychosis, either one, and we don't know her history. Right. But I would bet you this is a woman who suffered from depression or anxiety. Okay, and, and again, we don't know that. But I mean, I know that when I had my second child, who was just not even two years younger than my first, I, I felt like something was off. I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I wanted to hurt them. But, you know, at what point should we recognize that something just doesn't feel right? Or even the people around us, when we talk about signs, that maybe mm -hmm. something just isn't right. And, and how, do you, how do you fix it? How do you know who to go to? Here's the problem. There's a lot of shame associated with having negative feelings about motherhood. Mm -hmm. It's just not something mothers are supposed to have, even though probably every single mother has some kind of negative feeling about being a mother or towards their child at some point. But if these feelings go on for a long period of time, if they're lasting for more than two weeks, then you really need to go to your doctor and say, listen, I am really struggling with having tough feelings and I'm not able to get out of it. That's the difference between the baby blues, which happens for a brief period of time and is very normal post-pregnancy, and, and postpartum depression, which happens for a longer period of time. And you really need some kind of medication in order to neutralize those feelings. Okay, okay, good to know. But let's talk about a couple other moms. What about Julie Scheneker? who, of course, was just found guilty of killing her two teenagers. What about Susan Smith? Who could forget that name? Uh, the right. woman who, you know, drove her car with her children into a lake because she wanted to be with another man. These so are Susan's two moms that are, I mean, right. this is completely different. This has nothing to do with postpartum. That's right. That's exactly right. Well, Susan Smith had a character personality disorder where she felt her children were interfering with her romantic relationship. And so in her mind, if she got rid of her children, then she could be with the person she wanted to, to be in a relationship with. Faulty thinking, but here's a woman, this was the logic behind her killing her kids. They were interfering with her getting the love she needed. So it was coming from a very selfish place. With Julie, the woman that we just saw who was just sentenced to first degree murder, when she was at the sentencing, she said, my kids now can have everything they want, they're in heaven. 
Well, here's a woman who has very disordered thinking about what killing her children actually does. Is that what she really thinks? Now that they're in heaven, they're saved from the difficulty that life often brings with it. So here's a woman who seems mentally ill. She had uh, some kind of addiction history. It sounds like as a result of all of these factors, she felt very suffocated by motherhood. I almost got the impression when she was being sentenced that she liked the idea of not having to be a mother anymore. Yeah. And in prison, in prison, she could then be taken care of. So we see the multiple reasons and multiple factors that go into this heinous kind of crime. All righty. Hey, Robbie, thank you so much for talking to us about it. We, we so you. appreciate your insight. And I just hate to have to tell you these stories over and over again. So hopefully bringing some sort of, of good information. If you, you know, know somebody or have any weird feelings, do not let shame take you over and go and do something about it because you deserve better and so do your children, certainly.